ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار from a young age we're always told by our parents our teachers in school to always aim to be the best in everything that we do and it becomes such an integral and important part of our upbringing and even of our adult life that people pay special emphasis to what position they are with regards to certain fields and certain specialties when you're young you're compared with others when you have exams and the results come out people want to see who's number 1 who was the best when you play sports you want to be number 1 you want to be the champion you want to be the best and this isn't just something that's at a young age but it's also something that develops and it continues when you become older those things that you aim to be the best at change but the idea is still the same everyone wants to be the best in whatever it is that they're doing and most of the time it's related to their jobs or the way they look their appearance or the reputation that they have so a person may want to be the best at his job you have the best employee of the month some places they'll have this on the walls who was the best employee of the month or of the year companies will be compared and the one that made the most amount of money will be considered the best the best sports company the best company in whatever field you can imagine people always love to quantify and so even when we look at entertainment there's always the best teams who is number 1 who's number 1 in the premiership what's the fastest car and we always look at what's number 1 even ourselves we always try to compete with others and try to be the best whether it's how eloquent we may be how best dressed we are how much money we have how financially successful we are and how wealthy we are we compare ourselves to our neighbors and we look at their homes and we compare their homes with ours we look at the cars parked on the drives and we think i want my car to be better than anyone else's car in this neighborhood on this road and so this idea of being the best is something which people crave and they love the praise that's attached to it because obviously if you're considered to be the best in whatever field it may be there's an element of praise and recognition attached to that people will recognize you people will know you as a result of you being the best and they'll praise you and you'll feel good you'll feel the sense of accomplishment and achievement but what's interesting 
is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also considers some of us to be the best. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in many ahadith, which we'll try to mention at least seven or eight of them today, also told us about the best, who in fact are considered to be the best. Not when it comes to our financial income or in terms of our families and what our children accomplish when they're older or even in school, or in terms of who has the best car, the best house, who's the best dressed, who is considered to be the best in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ultimately, that's the most important thing in a Muslim's life. Because you can get all the recognition that you can get in this dunya, in this world, from all the human beings, and it's happened, this has happened in, in history in the past, where people have been praised, people have been recognized for their achievements. Whether it's on the battlefield, whether they were great leaders of their companies or great leaders of their nations, people have been considered to be the best. But ultimately, if the whole world was to recognize you as being the best, the richest, the smartest, the best in whatever field, at the end of the day, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't recognize you as one of the best, then really, brothers and sisters, in reality, it doesn't make any difference. It doesn't matter how much money you have, how well dressed you are, how smart you are. You could be the smartest person in terms of your IQ, but you could be from the inhabitants of hellfire. A believer is smarter than the one who has the highest IQ because he understands how this world is. And he understands the idea of a creator. A person can be the best dressed known for wearing the most expensive clothes. There's individuals in the world who wear clothes that are brand new, designer clothes, once, and then they don't wear them ever again. That's how obsessed they are when it comes to the world and the dunya. But this individual, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he'll be considered a spendthrift, a money waster, somebody who's sinful. He may be in the hellfire. So when we compare and we look at each other and we try to compete with one another, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us in the Quran, فَاسْتَبِقُ khayrat, Compete in that which is good. Try to be the best in that which is good. And what's good, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa have told us is good. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us these standards of what actually is the best, who is the best in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's really what we should be aiming for. Because if it was the opposite, if it was the other way around, and no one even knew us, we, and maybe we were the most unpopular of people, we weren't even popular, people didn't even like us. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala considered us the best, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning us to those who are around him, the angels. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising us, if Allah is going to reward us as a result of us striving to be the best in his eyes, then this is worth more than anything anyone could accomplish in this dunya. And so I wanted to go through some of these ahadith, and these ahadith will speak for themselves, because they are very clear ahadith. They're not a hadith which are complicated or difficult to understand. Each and every single one of us can look at these hadith and we can make our minds up about which one of these hadith we could implement in our lives. Because from the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this religion of ours is that the best aren't specific individuals who have to have a specific amount of money or a certain physical amount of strength or a certain type of memory. These multiple ahadith discuss and cover a wide range of topics. And this is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first ahadith, from the ahadith I wanted to mention, brothers and sisters, was a hadith narrated by Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu an. When he said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Inna min khiyarikum ahsanukum akhlaqan. That the best of you, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not in the sight of the people, 
are those who have the best manners, those who have the best akhlaq, those who are known for their good character. And so we have to reflect on ourselves and think about whether or not our akhlaq are such that if other people had the same manners and etiquettes that we have, we would praise those people because of the manners that they have. Because we have to look in the mirror and decide for ourselves whether we fit this hadith in terms of being the best in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to our etiquette, with regards to our manners. And then look at those who are around us. Think about those who are known for their akhlaq and their good manners. From your family members, from your relatives, from your friends, your neighbors, people you, you meet, acquaintances. And think about what makes them people who are praised as a result of their good manners. It may be the way they speak. It may be the smile on their face, their body language. So reflect on this hadith, brothers and sisters, about having the best of akhlaq. Akhlaq which, of course, we attain and we learn from the best of creation, the messenger of Allah, Of course, he was the one who had the best character. And if we want to understand how we can have the best akhlaq in order to be from the best in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we only have to look at the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and look at how he behaved with human beings, those who were older, those who were younger, with the Muslims and with the non-Muslims, with animals, and reflect and compare how he behaved to how we behave on a daily basis. The second hadith, brothers and sisters, also narrated by Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu an, when he said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خَيْرُ الْأَصْحَابِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرُهُمْ لِصَاحِبِهِ That the best of companions, the best of people in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who are best to their companions, those who are best to their friends. They are the best in the sight of Allah azza wa jal. Because you're doing whatever you can for those people that you care for or you say you care for. And that's why it may be the case that we may have acquaintances, we may have friends, or we may call them friends, people we work with, people we study with in school, people we, you know, we meet on a regular basis. But really, if we were to fall into a calamity, if we were to be in a situation where we needed help, in fact, there would only be maybe a handful of people that we would really be able to turn to. And an individual only knows this when a calamity actually befalls him. And that's when he realizes who those friends really are, the ones who would help him, and the ones who would aid him, and the ones who would assist him, and care for him, and be there for him when he needs them. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he continued in this hadith, and he said, وَخَيْرُ الْجِيرَانِ عند الله خيرهم لجاره. And the best neighbors in the sight of Allah are those who are best to their neighbors. We may have a habit of competing with our neighbors. And we may have a habit of trying to criticize everything that they may do in terms of how they may behave and what goes on in their homes and who comes in and out of their houses and at what times and how they park their car, and where they leave their wheelie bins, and not having it in front of our homes. But the best of neighbors are those who treat their own neighbors in the best of ways. Those who care for them. Those who, when they see and notice their neighbors struggling, they're willing to help them. And there's cases, brothers and sisters, of such neglect in some communities of neighbors not even knowing the conditions and circumstances and situations of people who are living next door to them. And it's been so bad that in some cases, people have neglected their neighbors to such an extent that even if they hadn't seen them for a number of days, weeks or months, they wouldn't, they wouldn't care. It wouldn't be an issue for them. It wouldn't matter to them. They wouldn't have this care and concern to the extent 
and this has happened, that people would walk past and the rubbish would pile up in this person's house and there would be no care taken of the lawn and they would criticize and they would mock and they would make fun of this individual. Look at his house compared to mine. Why isn't he taking care of this house? It's embarrassing to our neighborhood. And then a stench would start coming from the house. And eventually it became so bad, they would call the police. And when the police went in, they noticed that the man had been dead in the house for a number of weeks. And no one had even paid any attention. This has actually happened. And this is the level of neglect that can take place when a person doesn't have this, doesn't have this care and concern for his neighbors. The third hadith, brothers and sisters, narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu an, he said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ala ukhbirukum bi khayrikum, shall I not inform you of those who are the best and also inform you of those who are the worst? He said, those who are the best, man yurja khayruhu wa yu'manu sharruhu. The best are those who you expect good from them. You expect whenever you see them, whenever you meet them, whenever you interact with them, that they're only going to bring that which is good. And you feel safe from their evil. Meaning when you see them, you want to meet them. You want to approach them. Because you know when you meet them and you give them salam, they're going to respond kindly. They're going to show good akhlaq. They're going to be happy to see you. They're going to ask how you are. And maybe you want them to ask how you are. Because maybe you have problems, you have issues. And you're safe from their evil. You know if you meet this individual, he's not going to harm you in any way whatsoever. Physically, verbally, psychologically, emotionally. He's going to care for you. You'll, you feel safe in his presence. This is the individual whom the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa told us is the best of people. And then he mentioned the worst. مَنْ لَا يُرْجَى خَيْرُهُ وَلَا يُؤْمَنُ شَرُّهُ The one who you don't, expect good, you don't expect good from that person. And you don't expect to be safe from his evil. When you see them, you avoid them. You run a mile. You don't want to be anywhere close to them. Because you know every time you interact with them, they're going to say something. They're going to mock you. Make fun of you. They'll swear. Maybe even physically the way they behave. They, they have habits that you don't like. And so you avoid them. And you don't feel safe from their evil. And there's no good in that person. You don't expect any khair, any good from them. And this is something we have to think about and reflect on ourselves. How, go, how much good do we show when we interact with other people? And do we show evil? Do we have this intent to show harm in whatever manner it may be when we interact with other people? And how are people with us? When we approach a gathering, approach an individual, are they uncomfortable in our presence? Do we have this intention of causing them harm, mocking them, making fun of them, showing your superiority over them? Because if that's the case, you may end up being from the worst of people. The Messenger of Allah also narrated another hadith, hadith number four, narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha. She said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, خيركم, خيركم The best of you are those who are best to their families. And a similar narration by Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu an, that the best of you are those who are best to their women. And I am the best to my women. Alayhi salatu wasalam. So the, the best individuals in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aren't those who are good and show politeness and are courteous and show good akhlaq to strangers. Because anyone can do this. Whenever you meet a stranger, you're going to show good manners. You'll show good akhlaq. You're going to show good etiquette. You're going to think, I've never met this person before. I have to be good, show good manners. Think about how he perceives me. 
And this is something most of us do, if not all of us. But what's harder to do, brothers and sisters, and this is what's making these specific elite individuals from the best in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that when they go home, when the guards are down, when there's nobody watching, when they can relax, they still have that akhlaq and that etiquette to their own family members. Because most of the time when we go home and there's no one else watching, we can let our guards down. But when we let our guards down, in many cases that means that we end up showing less akhlaq and less good manners to those who are closest to us. And really they're the ones who will be influenced the most by the way that we behave. Because you are influenced by the people you socialize with. And people who have habits, people who have habits that you're mixing with, you may end up picking up those habits. And this is why the Messenger of Allah والسلام, told us that man is on the religion of his friend. So look at who you become friends with. Look at who you're socializing with. And that's not any more the case than with our own family members. People we're interacting with, mixing with, influencing. And they're influencing us in terms of how we behave, in terms of how they behave. Our children see us and pick up things. They'll pick up the way we speak or the way we behave and they'll behave in that same way. And so in fact, if there's any group of individuals that we should show the best akhlaq to according to this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is those who are closest to us, our own family members. Because that's the first school of our children. That's where they will get their education from. Because children, those who are young, they'll look at their parents, they'll look at those who are older than them, and they'll think, especially with parents, that everything that they, everything that they do is, is fine, it's good. My parents can't do anything bad. And so whatever the parents do, they'll think it's acceptable. And that's why it's so dangerous when a person behaves in a way which is wrong or inappropriate in front of his own children. Because these children are your future. They could potentially be your sadaqa jariya, your ongoing charity, based on your behavior. And if your behavior is sayyi, if your behavior is bad, evil, then it's not going to benefit you in the akhirah, but instead it'll cause, it'll cause you more harm. It'll cause you harm in the akhirah. Because instead of increasing your good deeds, you're increasing your bad deeds. As a result of passing on bad things, bad habits to your children. Hadith number five, narrated by Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an. He said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَ The best of you are those who, who learn the Qur'an and then they teach it to others. In whatever capacity a person can do. If you know a short or small amount of Qur'an, teach whatever you know to others. And you'll be considered from the best of people. And of course, the more you know, the higher you are in the status of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you could be from the best of people simply by teaching others whatever you know from the blessed Qur'an. Hadith number six, narrated by Suhaib radiallahu an. He said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خَيَارُكُمْ مَنْ أَطْعَمَ الطَّعَامِ That the best of you are those who feed others. Those who provide food and drink for other people. Those who take care of others' needs when it comes to their food and drink. Think about the last time that you invited somebody to your home or you gave somebody food and drink. Somebody who asked for some help or for some aid on the streets. A beggar, a homeless person. When was the last time you invited people to your home and fed them? Because this is one of the ways a person could get that, stage, that status of being from the best in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hadith number seven, narrated by Asma' bint Yazid radiallahu anha. 
she said that the messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam said, Allah unabbi'ukum bi khiyarikum. Shall I not tell you of those who are the best? They said, Bala ya Rasulullah, of course, O Messenger of Allah. He said, Khiyarukum, the best of you, Alladina idha ru'u dhukir Allah azza wa jal. The best of you are those who, when they're seen, dhukir Allah azza wa jal. It reminds the person when he sees them to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you interact with somebody and you talk about the dunya and you don't include adhkar and remembering Allah and praising Allah, you don't remind them of the deen, you won't be from this category. But when somebody is praising Allah, mentioning Allah's name, remembering Allah in gatherings, and as a result of this, you hear them or they hear you, and they start to remember Allah as a result of the way you behaved, as a result of the, the things that you said in that gathering, in that conversation. You'll be considered from the best of people. These are some of those individuals, brothers and sisters, that all of us should attain, all of us should try to inspire to attain and be like, to be the best in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَقُولَ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Brothers and sisters, we were talking about those who those who are considered the best in the sight of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And we said that being the best is something we all aspire to be in this dunya, in this world. Financially, whether it's physically the way we look or in terms of our appearance, our children and how they come across and what they do and their education and their studies or their, their jobs and their careers, whatever the case may be. A person always aspires or wants to be the best. And we mentioned these are hadith which truly and really should be our standards of how we should try to be the best, not in the sight of human beings and the dunya, but in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we mentioned some of these examples. Those who have the best akhlaq, those who are best to their family members, those who are best to their women. And it could be their spouse, it could be their mothers, their sisters, their daughters. These are hadith that we've mentioned are varied. Each and every single one of us can pick whatever we feel we're able to implement in our lives. And I want to conclude, brothers and sisters, with this final hadith, hadith number eight, narrated by Abu Bakr radiallahu an. When he said that a man came to the Messenger of Allah والسلام, and said, O Messenger of Allah, nasi khair? Who are the best of people? Tell me who are the best of people. Look at how many hadith that we've mentioned that talk about who the best are in the sight of Allah. The companions, they had this vision. They used to always think long term. And so the Messenger of Allah والسلام, he told us, Man tala umruhu wa hasuna amaluhu. The one who has a long life, but not just this, but he excels and he does good deeds. This is the greatest of individuals because Allah has blessed you twice. He's blessed you with life to be able to live this blessing which may end at any time. And at the same time, along with this blessing of life that he's given you, he has given you opportunities chances, moments. He's put you in circumstances. He's made you a believer. He's given you understanding and knowledge. And as a result of all of this, you end up doing righteous deeds. So along with this blessed life that you have, which could end at any moment, at the same time, Allah has blessed you by giving you the ability to be able to do righteous deeds. And this is the best kind of person in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal that He makes us from the best of people in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal Himself. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the ability to be able to accomplish and achieve and follow and act upon at least one of these hadith or even more. 
اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم وادعوه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أعلى وأولى وأكبر والله يعلم ما تسمعون أقيم الصلاة